So we're just back from the ease of pack plenary. Your take, Sam? Yeah, I think my take is that we've always known that our patients with localized esophageal adenocarcinomas die of metastatic recurrences. And now we have proof to say that FLOT beats cross improved survival for this population. So we are both medical oncologists, so we've always been probably a little bit biased towards team FLOT, but there never has been a head to head with these two treatments. This was a good trial, 400 patients across many German centers, standard esophageal and junctional cancers. And what we saw was across the board, FLOT was the winner. Better PAP CO rates, uh, better completion of treatment, and better disease control, a 30% improvement in uh, overall survival. Uh, are there any situations where you would use chemo radiotherapy? What about nivolumab? Yeah. Does that help? Those are going to be the questions for our multidisciplinary discussions, but I think that the upfront is clearly decided flat. These patients need systemic therapy. In someone who maybe is not going to make it to surgery or there's a concern about resectability, like adding radiation, I would only consider it after some real systemic therapy maybe a role, maybe there's a non-operative path that may require some radiotherapy, but take home message for us is FLOT is here, this is our standard, and this is what we're gonna be doing. Six months time, let's see the results of Matterhorn, maybe we'll be back here and there'll yeah. be another new standard of care. Agreed. But good result for patients today, it's shown us a clear way forward. Hey Lizzie, we just came out of the upper GI oral abstracts and saw some cool data. One of these was Renaissance, which was uh, you know, asking a surgical question in stage four patients. Tell me what your kind of high level takeaways were. So unfortunately, Renaissance was a negative trial. So it was asking the question whether we should operate on patients with advanced uh, gastroesophageal cancer, kind of like we do in colon cancer. 140 patients randomized, no significant improvement in overall survival for patients who had surgery. Also, a concern regarding high levels of perioperative mortality. We've got to remember that the surgery for these patients is difficult, yeah. especially retroperitoneal lymph nodes. I don't think that the question is closed. Their inclusion criteria were quite permissive, allowing up to five liver metastases. So I would like to revisit that question in future with slightly more stringent eligibility criteria and use of immune checkpoint inhibitors. I agree with you. I think there is a pathway forward to consider this still as a question to investigate. I think one of the other questions we saw investigated was, what happens if you change therapy earlier at an arbitrary cut point? So the Armani trial from our Italian colleagues asked, if you are stable after three months of 5-FU platinum, should you switch arbitrarily to RAMPAC or should you continue 5-FU oxaliplatin? And the primary endpoint was PFS, and they did improve the progression-free survival by about three months, and that was statistically significant. Any overall survival benefit? Yeah, the overall survival was like 10 point something versus 12.6. So we can fall back on this data as evidence that this is a strategy that may be supported in some patients if there's a need to delay the occurrence of progression. I'd like to revisit this by adding the platinum and 5-FU back in again on progression to understand if that improved overall survival. And I'd also like to understand quality of life on continuous chemotherapy, because Agreed. I think that might be an issue too. Agree, and having a biologic in there would never hurt either. Absolutely. Italians do good trials though. Agreed. We were discussing colorectal abstracts. It's the first is liver transplantation and metastatic colorectal cancer, and the other one, with a nice name collision is RFA versus resection and liver metastasis. We start with a French abstract on liver transplantation. Um, the results were quite clear. They suggest to us uh, that there's a huge benefit for patients that are transplanted, very selected patients. So are you going to adopt? I think we're all going to have to find ways to adopt it. The, the data was wonderful. This is a really poor prognostic group of patients, who some of whom may be cured with this, which is um, really very remarkable. It's a very well-conducted study. I think there will be challenges in terms of optimal patient selection and of course the expertise that's going to be needed to deliver this treatment in the future um, and of course um, the av availability of, of organs. So I think it really exciting, nobody can ignore it, but there is going to be some issues in terms of deliverability and, and resource. I agree and the surgeons are really thrilled. Yeah. Um, so they love that, um, yeah. and, and we love the surgeons, so we're fine with them. Yeah. Uh, on the other hand, a bit surgical suffering maybe in the collision trial, oh, yes. resection versus RFA, 
Mm -hmm. um, and I think the message was rather that RFA has less complications, less toxicity, and the long-term efficacy was the same. So will you adopt that? I think this is also from a serving point, community yeah. point of view. Yeah, no, I, I, indeed. I think the data was, was very well generated and it was very clear. Um, and I think it would serve many patients well. Um, but again, there's going to be issues with equity of access, um, not only between nations, but within nations themselves. But I would hope that this data is really quite definitive now. And I would really hope it would drive the, the move to, um, to make this available to more patients. So, so yeah, of course. I agree. Um, I think we can conclude that two abstracts, uh, two treatment modalities that are not clearly at the front line or have not been at the yeah. front line, uh, that will come to the front line and that also have severe consequences for infrastructural work uh, for the avail availability of therapy. So this is yeah. really kind of a thrilling uh, session. Eh? It was Do you know what? It was, it was a great session, great studies, great presentations. Well, we're going to discuss some of the abstracts regarding immunotherapy in locally advanced colon and rectal cancer that were presented in the oral sessions at ASCO. The first abstract I thought was interesting was neoprism. So this is adding to the increasing data on neoadjuvant IO in locally advanced colon cancer. And again, it's showing consistent data in terms of pathological complete response. It told us that TMB isn't that helpful in terms of patient selection. And it did highlight some potential surgical complications which haven't really been highlighted before. What was your take? Um, pretty much the same. I think the level of evidence increases gradually. Yeah. Um, we gain more and more data uh, over time, and I think it will be established at some point. Uh, I, I'm not quite sure for whom it's really necessary. Um, I'm grateful that TMB was demonstrated again to be not helpful. Yeah. Um, so, but for MSI, we will establish that option. Yeah. Sooner well, or later. Sooner or later, I agree. Um, the other interesting thing was that more data, more long-term um, follow-up of CERSEX data and locally advanced MSI high rectal cancer. And again, we've now got more patients treated, nearly 40 patients treated. Patients have been followed up for longer and we're still seeing this really quite amazing um, durable response with dostarlimab. Um, so no patients have either recurred or relapsed. And we're also seeing it's a duration of six months um, to the point of complete response. But again, duration of, of pre-op treatment is, is really important. What, what were your feelings around this data? It's incredible, mm. unbelievable, really. Yeah. Um, I'm thrilled. Um, yeah. I think it has been imp implemented on the basis of that small trial, still small trial. Um, and I think this duration until complete uh, remission of six months uh, is something that everyone has to keep in mind when managing patients because you, you need good nerves. Um, you, should, you shouldn't get nervous. Uh, you need to follow up and uh, you need to tell your patients because I think it's a long time running around with cancer, uh, not being cured. I mean, you have to take yeah. that into account. Eh? Yeah. Um, but I'm thrilled and I think this, this defines a new standard in a way. Yeah, so it's so really heading the way towards standard of care, I think.